What's up YouTube? I am here today to do another video. I haven't done really very many at all, but this one I'm going to be doing on Handbrake, which is a video compression uh, program. It allows you to take your videos and compress them down into a storage manner that is really good for media servers or small devices like iPhones and whatever type of video media player you might have. Um, but the reason I'm doing it is because there was no real explanation on how or why or what settings to do. So I've played around with a lot of little things and this is my little guide on how to get expert quality settings, compression settings, on really a dumbified way. Um, there's not very many settings you have to do, but there is a few steps you need to take in order to fulfill them. First off is video compression is really best achieved when you have the the most data out of your source file. What I mean by that is if you have a DVD and the file is normally four and a half gigabytes, try to keep it at four and a half gigabytes because then you have the most data available to compress and it's able to check one bit at a time and figure out how what patterns are there and compress it down. Uh, if you're taking an already compressed video and trying to make it smaller and better quality it's not really going to happen. You can try sometimes if you shrink the pixels it'll work but uh, for the most part just try to keep as as original source data as you can. And here on Handbrake as you can see it has some settings and it wants you to choose a source. For me uh, there's a couple programs that I like to use and the first one is slice off any DVD. Let me bring up my page here. The reason I like slice off is because it does DVD and Blu-rays. Most discs when you purchase them come with protection and so you're gonna have to have some sort of program that'll by bypass that pr protection and allow you to convert your videos down. Now this is supported by law. It's not copyright infringement because you have the right to back up your DVDs uh, and your and your media its personal use and private use and so getting these programs to bypass that encryption or that that uh, protection is not illegal you're able to do that and to get your media and put it onto your stuff so I like to use slice off DVD now they do they do have you purchase it I, I purchased it they updated a lot if you don't like to purchase things come over to make MKV they do the same thing they convert it into an MKV format Slicesoft is able to convert it down to an ISO. I like ISOs because I can either burn it back to a disk or mount it up using another program they have called Virtual Clone Drive. It's free software and what it does is it simulates extra DVDs in your system so that way you can mount these files uh, logically on your system. So once we have those uh, you'll be able to copy your disks. So like down here, I have my slice off running, I can just right click and if I have an image, I can rip it to an image. And when it rips it to an image, uh, you are able to get your full settings. And so here, here's a few of my movies that I've been convert copying here lately and they are in an ISO format and if I wanted to mount it so let's say Star Trek I can right click mount and choose one of the drives you can select how many drives you want so I'll mount it on that one you can see it'll bring it up oh look it's just like a normal normal blu-ray disc but you can also see the size here is 40 go 44 gigabytes I mean that's a ton of data but that's what blu-rays come in and the purpose of this video is to show you how you can get that down to uh, I get mine down to about 900 megabytes less than a gig so it's, it's pretty good pretty good compression but once you have the ISO made go ahead and come in here to handbrake select the source and we'll choose Star Trek because that's the one I have and you can see it's scanning all the chapters once it gets through all the chapters, we'll be able to go through and view the settings. 
you can see here on the right side the handbrake already comes with some normal ones I have some user presets down here and I'll show you how to save one of those here in a second uh, it's selected on the normal currently which for the most part normal is actually decent if you want to convert in speed convert it down it's going to be it's going to be great I mean most DVDs convert down to about a gig between 800 and 1.2 gigs most Blu-rays at 1080p will convert down to about 3 gigs. I mean, it's fast, but it doesn't take advantage of really expert compression settings. Um, so I'll go ahead and we can see here, check some of them. You can see that the width is 1920 by 1080. Uh, it automatically crops it, which is really nice. It checks to see where the black areas are on the frames, crops it down, saves data that way there's different settings you can see the video compression settings and as you go through there's lots of little things so we'll go ahead and start through here and as we walk through I'm going to give you the settings that will give you the best compression now I'm giving you a warning these compressions uh, and conversions will probably take you about a day and a half two days but you will be re you will really like the results. If not, you can pretty much just keep it the normal settings. Click on Web Optimized. I like that one. Um, when it comes to media and stuff, usually you can just change this to 1280 by 720, which it, it's a little less because of the cropping and stuff. But that's 720p. The, there's no point in keeping 1080 unless you truly want it. Then you can do 1080. Uh, if you come over here, you can see the 20 frames. If you if you, if you move these reference frames up, your compression will be more, but your quality will be a little less. So the default 20, if you're just speeding through this, is fine. Keep it a variable frame weight, frame rate. Audio, eh, 160. You could probably shrink that down if you want to 128, but it's normal 160. Subtitles, if you have subtitles, and Star Trek Into Darkness does have some forced subtitles. I usually like to just click on forced and burn them in so that way I don't have to worry about whether my device supports subtitles or not. It's burned right into the frame. And then you're good. I mean that's really all you have to do. You can click start and it'll convert it down. Make sure you have your destination, your container. But that's all fine and dandy. This, this Star Trek Into Darkness will convert down to probably 3 gigabytes. But that 3 gigabytes adds up really fast if you have a lot of movies. So, what I want you to know here for this compression is we are going to take this, we're going to leave it at the 1280, because that's uh, the 720p is good. Filters, we want to denoise this uh, as you start compressing and converting things, it tends to, tends to block up a little bit and kind of get artifacts around. So this will try to, this will try to loosen up, a, a, or I guess clear up, sharpen up a lot of those images and corners. Video. Now here we do want compression to go up, so for Blu-rays we're going to keep it around 26 frames, reference frames. And you want it a constant frame rate. You don't want the frame rates to move around. Constant frame rate is just fine. Keep it as the same as the source. Down here though, this is your speed. Very fast will go through to use all your cores. When you do true compression, you only want to use a single core. Uh, I, that's why it takes so long, but what that does is that enables the pieces of information as one block goes in gets converted it's able to pull it out move the second block in and then look for similarities between the first and the second and that allows it to compress through the whole video if you have four blocks you get block one block two block three block four going into each core and it can't check for similarities so it only compresses what's inside that block and not what it can continue on throughout the rest that dramatically decreases or increases the size of your result which this whole tutorial is to get the least size but yet the best quality so you can see here very fast faster fast down to all the way down to placebo literally like just crawling and it does but you get the best quality so move that to placebo and then down here in the extra options we're going to add one variable it's going to be threads equal one. No spaces, just threads equal one. 
what that does is that that locks the process into a single core single single thread and that will enable you to get your best compression come over to audio 96 bit rate and convert this down to stereo uh, you still get really good sound and like I said I mean if this is for devices or even media centers unless you have surround sound you're mostly going to have stereo and the stereo sounds just fine um, if not you can obviously choose your 5.1, 7.1, whatever you want but stereo this is your best quality uh, or, or your best compression just choose stereo subtitles like I said I like to keep forced and burn it in and uh, that's actually it so not too much harder but your speed is dramatically decreased now and if you want to save this like you can see my 720p over here you can do option uh, okay I'm sorry it's not under options it's actually right here add the biggest thing uh, you just click add you can tell it to save so YouTube 720 there we go YouTube 720 picture size custom and if you do the 1280 it'll try to customize it down to 1280 um, leave that as zero because it automatically crops it as you can see save video filter yes description whatever just add that bam there it is so now next time you click on it it'll try to insert all of these things automatically it won't it won't save this cuz uh, not every movie will have subtitles so if it does and you want it you'll have to check that every time but it works once that's all hand fine and dandy you can either click start or add it to the queue so if we click add to the queue you can then load in more things so life of pi scan it in um, so once it loads in you can see here that the profile is already applied to the new movie filters the same video I mean 26 constant you can see it's all here except for the subtitles. So you want to load those in and everything else should be the same. We're not using the advanced tab because essentially we've done all the advanced we need right here. It takes care of the rest. Add that to the queue. We can show our queue. We can see what's in here if we need to edit it or just delete it out. And then from this point you can click start. And you can see I'm doing video recording. It's it's recording quite a bit 1080p video right now. My screen capture. It's not really using a lot of my processor. I click start because it's limited to a single thread. You can see it's not really adding a whole ton back into my system. I mean it bumped me up to what average of roughly 40 percent, 45 percent processor or less, depending on the time. Um, if I wasn't doing screen capture, it'd probably be about 30%. But it, limit it limits it to one thread, uh, but it takes forever. And you can see this time remaining will continue to climb until it zeroes out. Uh, it'll probably be re between 36, about 36 hours to 48 hours, uh, almost two days. But your video compression will be the best. Uh, I'm going to pause that. Um, it's actually going to keep converting. Yes, I want to proceed. I'm just going to delete them because I want to show you some of the end results. I have these files, temp converted. Uh, right here, I've already converted some of these. So I'm going to pull that in. And then I got some other video compression ones. I mean, some of you might know people who have already compressed them. And I. Uh, I wanted to get the best quality compared to the ones that I already had so that way I could just do my own movies and here was the professional ones that I had before oh you know what I think I just because I cancelled that I overwrit my original one 
Anyways, I guess I can explain. My old one, the old ones I had was 922. After this converts and finishes, it's actually going to be about 960. Man, I wish I didn't overwrite that. Oh well, whatever. So 960, 922, it's a 40 megabyte difference. And these guys, I'm pretty sure they're doing a lot better compression quality than what I was, or a lot harder compression quality than what I'm doing. Our our uh, handbrake file, though, with as simple as those settings are, you're not going to lose out. Like, that's your best quality, and you're not going to get it really anywhere else. So, yeah, if you have some questions, you can put them in the uh, comments box. I'll try and answer them. Uh, but for the most part, there you go. There's your handbrake tutorial. Remember, save the best quality. So make MKV or Slysoft or any others as long as you can get original quality, best quality. And that's uh, that's it. So I'm signing off. Thanks. Bye.